So today we're going to be looking at drawing up this site for part one. Um, so taking a look at the satellite image here. So it's it's this little piece of land. Um, so we're going to look, take a look at drawing this up in Revit. So let's start by taking our site survey. And let's start by importing it into Revit. Um, so I've got my site plan view up here. Um, so I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to import in this PDF. bring in this PDF here and increase the resolution and I'm going to stop cropping view here So we have our PDF in here now, and we're going to take this PDF, we're going to start drawing these lines. I'm a big fan of actually using the distances on here to draw the lines, um, just makes it a little bit more accurate. Um, so let's start by doing that. So let's go up to Massing and Site here. Let's go to Property Lines, and let's go to Create by Entering Distances and Bearings. Um, we're going to start with our first line here. We're going to go counterclockwise, so we're going to do 59. So, and here's a little trick here. When you're doing this, you can actually separate everything by a space. So 59 space, 15 space, 55. And I believe this property here is, let me just see here. I think it's probably in meters. Um, we'll start off by assuming it's meters and I'm just gonna check that, eight, six. And then you can actually, instead of, you type in the number and then you just hit M for meters and it automatically converts it to feet. see here okay it is in feet okay so let's let's change that back so 197.86 just hit enter and it'll automatically convert it so let's do our next line here so let's go insert and let's go to 486.51 and then let's do uh, 60 zero eight space 50 and let's see how that looks so we got a straight line so we got some of our bearings off here so we got north 59 west so let's check that and then um this one's probably going to be south and so um a lot of the surveys we get are all in respect to north and it and it's what these surveys are doing, they're thinking about each line as an individual segment, not as its relationship to the previous line. So what we just need to do is we just need to reverse this. So instead of northeast, we got southwest. So let's change this to southwest. And let's see how that looks. So yeah, that looks pretty close to the geometry we have there. So let's go to the next line here. So we have Let's go insert and let's do 286.79 and let's do 79.50.00. Check this as I think this is going to be southeast because that's northwest. I think that one's still going to be going down. Um, and let's do another one here. So we have. 235.94 and we have the same bearing so we have 79 space 50 you notice there I didn't type in the last two zeros and so Revit will also uh, will automatically compute that for you let's add one more and this should be our last line here so we have um, 2 uh, 45.87 delete that before and we have 18 20 55 so you notice that there's a dimension on the outside and inside typically the dimension on the outside is to um, another element um, so you can see how this one ends at this point which is where this line is 
And this is kind of a unique thing with waterfront property. Typically the markers for the survey are back from the water's edge. And so legally you own to the water's edge, but the surveyors, um, they pull their markers back just for, um, you know, visibility purposes, just so they can see them. So let's, um, so northeast, so this one should be south east. Let's just see if that looks good. So yeah, I think that's, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to bring this roughly down over here and I'm just going to scale this up and just to see if that kind of resembles our property. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So let's, um, let's scale this back just a little bit and let's get this to be almost right on that point. Oh, I did the wrong, I need to scale it up actually. So since we don't have a, a proper survey for this project and uh, depending on the project, one might be on the way, we'll just use um, this rough line to um, somewhat gauge our, our property line, or sorry, our, our water line marker. Um, the one thing we do probably want to use um, is this 21.4 is probably that distance right there. Um, it says plus minus because obviously that's fluctuating based on the water line. Um, and then over on this side, we have 11 um, plus minus. So let's start by um, drawing our water. And so to draw waters, the water, we usually use a filled region. And we'll save that or if it's good at reminding you to save. Um, let's go in and save this. And we usually use, um, we have some predefined line weights in here. So we usually use uh, a wide line or an extra wide line for our water just to make it um, really prominent. And then over here, we actually have a site blue set up for water. And so let's start just by tracing these lines. And you know, we're trying to be as accurate as we can with this, but obviously there's um, a bit of inaccuracy because um, this is a, a scanned PDF, not a um, an export from CAD file, so. And usually for our water, we'll go past um, the property we're working on just um, or mostly for the crop region for um, the property. So we'll do something like that. And then I usually just drag this and make a big square up here. And just so that, you know, that'll be outside our, our line there. So I'm just gonna bring this one across like that. And then I'll use the fillet command here to fill those in. And then these outer lines, I'm actually going to change the line type. So I just selected them there, holding the control command on the keyboard. We're just going to change these to be invisible lines. And it's going to look like that. So we have a big, thick, solid line. Let me just hide this PDF here for a second. So that's what we got going on there. So let me bring that back. Bring... I just hid that by using HH on the keyboard. Um, so let's bring that back. So that's our, our start to our survey. Um, now what we'll do is we'll start setting up our setbacks and we'll start setting up um, any other control elements that we need. Um, one thing that we often do, and I'm gonna actually just hide this survey for a second. One thing we often do with our surveys is we actually will draw a circle just around um, these intersections. And this is just more for us to um, kind of have a bearing of where those elements are. Let me try that again, circle. And then we'll just copy this to all the corners. Um, again, this is just a reference for us to know where these, these circles are. And let me copy it again and turn on the multiple button there. I just use the tab button on the keyboard there to lock to that point. 
and then we can um, go in here and we can tag our boundaries. Like so. Um, if you don't have a tag loaded in, there should be one on um, in your Revit family folder, or you can go online to uh, various family websites to uh, acquire that. So we have this. Um, within our projects, um, we have uh, some of our standard zoning bylaws we work with, with the different uh, cities and towns. Um, so I'm just going to open up our sheet set here. And so over here we have all of our different zoning bylaws. So this one, um, let's see, this one is, what do we have? We have this, this is ours right here. So I'm going to delete these other ones bring this over so we have our side yard setbacks of 4.6 so 15 feet um, so let's start by drawing those so basically we have two side yard setbacks on this no rear yard setback um, so let's go to annotate let's go to detail line and we have a line we call zoning and it's just a red dash line so let's type in offset of 15 feet here, like so. And use the fillet command here again and fill those in. So that's our rear yard setback. Um, the other thing to note is on the waterfront. Um, so for a setback from the water, um, where do we have it here? Um, yeah, so our front yard setback from the water is 66 feet. So this is something that's pretty common in a lot of our, our lakefront properties. Um, they want the buildings to be back beyond the water's edge. So the way we do this setback is a little bit different. So we actually do circles and we connect those circles. Um, and this is just based on the, the contour of the shore. Um, actually, I don't want to have an offset in there. Um, so we'll just type in 66. Oh, sorry, I don't want it. So now what we do is we take this, this offset here and we copy this along the shoreline. And then what we'll do after is we'll connect all those circles together. And so I usually do a midpoint, depending on how long these lines are. Usually when we have proper surveys, these lines are not this wide apart. So I usually do one in the center and one on the actual point. And that's just, that's all dependent on the, on the survey and the length of these lines. You know, sometimes I might add another one in there depending on how large that is. So now that we have that done, um, we'll use our trim and extend command here in modify to join these lines together. And again, this setback is from the water's edge, not from this, the property line. These property lines are kind of artificial here. They, um, they're there just mostly to um, create a distance for the surveyor between the, those markers, but the uh, actual water's edge governs the front, uh, the front yard of the property. And so I'll just delete these outside circles, and then that's our 66-foot setback line. So we usually add um, a little bit of piece of text in here that says 66-foot Which is 20.1 meter back. Changes to caps here. Set back from water. You just do something like that and put it right here on the side of the property somewhere. So that's the basics of uh, doing setbacks for a property.
Um, depending on the property, we'll have different setbacks and there'll be different requirements. Um, so on lakefront properties, there's usually extends out into the water um, setbacks. Um, so we would add those and uh, any other kind of element that we would have on a property like this. So just looking here, um, so for um, dock length, we have 66 feet, we have boathouse length 50 feet, and we have um, habitable floor would be 45 feet, no, uh, 35 feet, yeah, so second floor location would be 35 feet. So this property, I don't believe we're allowed to second floor, so we'll just stick with the 66 feet and the 50 feet. And so this is the same concept as the other ones, but what we, we do something a little bit differently with this. Um, so we'll draw our 66, and then I'll, I'll usually draw my 50, and then I'll, if we have a 35, we'll draw the 35 at the same time. And we'll select all three of these, these points, and we'll just go around all at once and draw all of these. It gets a little bit confusing, but I find this saves a lot of time. And if you need to, you can use the tab button to to get that point on the line. So it's a little bit um, repetitive here. And if, if we know the location of, of where our client wants to put something, we might um, focus our accuracy in one spot. Um, so I, I usually start with this with the outside line and I'll just uh, bring all these together like this. And um, what I'll do right here is I'll just pause this video and I'll just clean up these lines and show you what they look like. So this is what we end up with. We have our three setback lines going around the edge of the property. Um, you can see like there's a, it kind of dips in quite a bit in a few spots. So if we were concerned about, you know, being super tight with our line um, in certain areas, we could add more circles to clean up that radius. And uh, like, for example, over here, you know, we could just grab these three lines and we could use the copy button. We can find um, that point right here. We can just add another one down there and then just fill those in to improve that accuracy. Like so. So that's that's how those are the basics of setting up a site survey. And I guess a lot of it's dependent on the city or town that, that we're doing this in and uh, depending on those numbers that they need. So I um, hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.